Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I'm going to give you some tips and explain to you why certain cylinder heads fail on Briggs & Stratton snowblower engines. So this specific head here came out of this John Deere snowblower with a Briggs & Stratton engine. It's a 15.50. It's pretty well the same head on the 1450 and the 1350s. Now what happened is this snowblower here was extremely hard to pull over. It was almost like it was hydrolocked. It did not start at all even with the electric starter. And when I got the head off, I saw the push rod on this side was all bent like this. So the main subject of my video today, guys, is to show you why the push rod ends up being bent like this and to show you exactly what's going on in the cylinder head that causes this to happen and also what causes your snowblower not to start and sometimes be extremely hard to pull when you get this problem here. So what I think is going on, guys, is some of the parts that are used in these cylinder heads are not of good quality. So what commonly happens in these cylinder heads is one of the valve guides pops out and it's always the exhaust one. I've got another head here with one that's good. You can see it is not popped out. And I've taken the exhaust valve on this head here, which is the good one. You can see the guide is flush with the head in there. And now if we look at the bad head, you can see the guide is protruding on the inside. So what I think is happening here, guys, is because the valve guide pops out, somehow the rocker arm doesn't work quite as well as it should. It's not able to go all the way down. And in turn, I think it's bending the push rod. And usually what happens is the push rod will pop off the back of the rocker arm here so that the valve is always shut. And that's why you're not able to pull your engine over even with the electric starter. So it kind of simulates as if it were hydrolocked. Now what I want to explain to you guys now is whether you're fixing this for yourself or for a customer. Do you want to do a professional repair or do you want to just do a backyard repair? I'll explain you both methods and the pros and cons of both. Now if you're just fixing this for yourself and you don't care if it breaks in a week or two months or whatever, you can just hammer this back down and make sure it's even on the inside like I showed you earlier. Get a new push rod which will be part number 592673. This is what you get. I don't bother replacing this part at the bottom. I just do the push rod because I do not want to take the whole engine apart. Now the pros of doing a backyard repair like this is that it's going to be cheap. It won't cost you anything except buying a new push rod. You're going to get it done quickly and it won't cost you anything hardly. The cons though are that the valve guide will eventually work its way back out and you don't know what kind of damage that can cause to your engine. Sometimes it's just a push rod, sometimes it's a little more elaborate than this. So depending on your budget, how much money you have, and how quickly you want your engine to be running, you could do it this way. Although I do not recommend to do it this way, even though I'm telling you that you could. But if it does not last, then there's nobody else to blame but yourself. So the reason I don't do a backyard repair is because I don't want my customers coming back in a month or two with the same problem. So what happened here, the customer had brought it to a mechanic with the same issue last year, I believe. The mechanic just pounded it back down with a hammer handed it back to him, it ran. And here the guy's bringing it to me not long after, so I don't want the guy to have another repeat of that. So what I do is I tell people the price of a new head, it's around 300 bucks here in Canada. Or if I have a good used one, which has been quite reliable, then I may put it in if that's what they want with a limited warranty on the used part. But definitely I do not recommend hammering this back down because once you start doing that, the tolerances are not the same, the valve guide is not as tight in there as it was from the factory and it's just a matter of time before it pops out again. So basically my remedy for that is put a new head because the valve guide is part of the head, you cannot buy it separately or if you have a good used head you can install it on your snowblower. And as you can see here I've got another head which is the second one over here with the same issue, the valve guide is popped out. Again, it is the exhaust valve, and I've had many engines like this come through the shop here that were scrapped because of this issue. People did not want to fix them. Basically, when I get these in and they're scrapped like that, I just kind of strip a few parts and then throw the head out. If I do get good engines that come in the shop, what I do is I save the heads if the rest of the engine's no good, and I've had good luck doing that as well. And I do recommend that you use a brand new push rod like I showed you earlier here. 
Anyway, so that's what's going on with the Briggs & Stratton snowblower engines. The valve guides keep popping out or working their way out. I'm not exactly sure why. Hopefully Briggs uh, makes those heads a lot better than they are now so people don't have to keep fixing these. So that's what's up with these cylinder heads on the Briggs & Stratton snowblower engines. Like I mentioned in the video, if your snowblower becomes really hard to pull over, that could be a sign that this is happening in your engine. Some other symptoms might include a lot of popping, hard to start, backfires, and stuff like that. And also, as I mentioned, if your engine becomes hard to pull over, even the electric start won't be able to turn it over as well. I want to thank you for watching, guys. Make sure you're subscribed and that you're following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please comment below. Have a great day.